the internet goes down, more IoT things are being hacked, and a product recall. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for Tuesday, October 25th, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. First off, a big thanks to our patrons over at patreon.com slash threatwire. You guys fund the making of this show, so thank you for letting us bring you security news every single week. This week, I would like to focus on something that we've kind of sort of been discussing for the past month that the security industry has kept an eye on and is probably now screaming, I told you so. So apparently Friday was a terrible day to be on the internet, but it also marks the day that IoT or Internet of Things security started becoming a mainstream concern. Remember a couple of weeks back when I reported on Krebs on security being hit with a huge distributed denial of service attack or a DDoS for short? Yeah, that same malware hitting his site is the culprit behind a mass outage on Friday of last week when several popular websites seemingly went offline for quite some time. The DNS infrastructure company called Dyn DNS reported Friday morning that a DDoS was hitting their servers and engineers were mitigating the attack. Sites that went down included Twitter, PayPal, Reddit, Spotify, Shopify, Netflix, Zendesk, and there were quite a few other ones as well. The DDoS attack was eventually resolved later that evening after three different attacks occurred on Dyn DNS. So how did this happen? It's the same way that it happened previously. Unprotected Internet of Things devices like connected security cameras and DVRs and printers and, I don't know, refrigerators more are being used in large botnets. And this one in particular is called Mirai to send huge amounts of data at servers to basically crash them and make websites go down. Flashpoint, a security firm, identified IoT devices amongst other device botnets to be in use. DynDNS makes it possible for us to type in a website address like twitter.com and then have that human speak translated into computer speak so that the computer knows where we want to go on the internet. So basically, if that doesn't work, then we can't get to the website correctly and then everything gets jumbled and the website seemingly looks like it's gone down. It's not very fun basically. And since so many sites rely on Dyn DNS to make their addresses work, they all went down. By Friday night, Dyn DNS had fought three DDoS attacks throughout the day, and the DHS and the FBI are both investigating the DDoS, although no one is sure who is behind the attack, even though some people on Twitter said they were, but nobody really believes them because there's no proof. So what do we know? The Mirai botnet now infects a total of over 1.3 million devices worldwide, and Intel's malware tech heat map shows a good view of their location and how many are currently online. Krebs on Security reports that the attack used products that use, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced this, I don't speak any Chinese, a Chinese Zhang Mai Technologies components in their manufacturing. The components are cheaply produced and they're sold on a much larger market by vendors who use them in security cameras, etc. and then they go unfixable as long as they're on the internet and in the consumer market. Now, while some allow you to change your username and password, that may not necessarily fix the problem. To quote Brian Krebs, quote, that's because while many of these devices allow users to change their default usernames and passwords on a web-based administration panel that ships with the products, those machines can still be reached via more obscure, less user-friendly communication services called Telnet and SSH. The passwords on this kind of access are usually hard-coded into firmware, meaning that a consumer can't necessarily change them. In a post published by the Chinese manufacturer Zhang Mai, uh, products sold after April of 2015 do not have the vulnerability because they closed Telnet ports that were open to the web. But a product could still be vulnerable if default username and passwords were not changed. XM, Zhang Mai for short, XM, I'm just going to say XM because it's much easier to say, also states that they will recall any known vulnerable devices. Lastly, they go on to state that they would sue any company that defames them by naming them as a part of the botnet DDoS attack on Friday. Okay, so will a DDoS this big happen again? It probably will, and it'll probably keep getting worse until we have a way to nip the problem where it starts. As a consumer, you should care because a DDoS using your device could slow down your connection, but also be used by attackers to snoop at you. I mean, think about it, security cameras, 
Yeah, kind of don't want people peeping into your household. That's a little creepy. Now, even if a patch or a recall is sent out, plenty of folks won't even care or won't know how to fix their own product or send it back. But I will say this again, you can vote with your, with your wallet. Uh, before buying a product, research their security. Know what you are buying, especially if you are connecting it to your own network. That is such a huge component. And this is just the beginning of some a very, very big problem that we're going to see a lot of. Thank you again for being patrons of ThreatWire. You can contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire to get your name on threatwire.net, as well as your own fur baby in the show. If everyone that watches the show donates a dollar per month, we would successfully cover all of our fees like rent, electricity, my time, plus we would be able to put in more time to the show so that we can do upgrades like bring you a new camera and bring you more content every week. If you can't contribute, you can give the show a thumbs up. You can subscribe on youtube.com slash hack5. I would love to see if we can get this episode over 1,000 thumbs up. That would be awesome, and it really does help with our analytics and brings more people to the show. So we would love to see more people uh, sharing this and subscribing. And you can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And with that, I'm Shana Morse, and I will see you on the internet.